demonstrate the use of a uh, dwell meter for setting the points in, uh, in a tier. Um, I've got two instruments here. First of all, I've got a, a modern automotive digital meter, which uh, can also not only do dwell but also do the revs. Um, but I've also got uh, a more old fashioned um, analog dwell meter. Uh, the analog dwell meter is probably more accurate because um, it's not uh, suspect to um, interference from electric, electrical activity inside the engine compartment. This one I bought from uh, eBay for about eight pounds and the guy who sold it me said that it worked last time his grandfather used it. So the first one I use is the uh, digital automotive meter and you simply connect it to the uh, positive earth point of the battery and to the low tension output from the coil to the distributor. Now we'll uh, start the engine and then switch on the uh, digital meter and see what happens. So here's the digital meter. Uh, we'll turn the dial to 12 for four cylinders. And you can see that it's not bad, but it's jumping slightly all over the place, and it's reading a dwell angle of 63.9. Now, watch what happens when uh, the end is ticking over at about 900 reps, something like that. Oh, let's check that. Uh, right, four cylinders. It's not a thousand breaths, something like that. Do that to the dwell angle, which 63.8. And if I just thread the engine up, you'll be able to see it probably changes from 63.8 to. Now that can't be accurate, and the reason is, is because the uh, electric interference of the system is uh, from all the uh, high tension wiring in the engine. At the moment I've got non-resistor plugs in it. If you put resistor plugs in the engine, then the uh, digital automated is usually a bit more accurate, a bit more accurate than that. So what we'll do now is we'll stop the engine and we'll connect the analog meter instead. So we've now got the uh, analog meter connected to the uh, um, earth point on the battery and to the low tension output from the coil to the distributor. So we'll uh, start the engine and see what reading we get.
reading is on the green bar on the bottom and it's giving us about the about 62, 64 degrees dwell which is a little bit, maybe a little bit too much for the uh, uh, for uh, the interesting thing about dwell is that the greater the dwell and the closer the point gap is. So at 64 degrees it would be about 14 pounds. If below 60 degrees it's about 16 pounds. 60 degrees is round about 15 pounds, which is just about right. And I've got my engine timed so that um, the timing is correct, I think, for the 60 degree dwell. It's interesting that the amount of uh, dwell you've got actually affects the timing of the engine as well and uh, 2 to 4 degrees extra dwell or less actually retards and advances the engine. Um, what we're just reading about, as I said, about 64 degrees dwell, what would happen when I read the engine now? It should drop to about 60. And uh, what's happening is that we're having the engine to about, about 3,000 revs. And the, uh, the dwell is actually dropping from about 64 degrees to 60 degrees. Um, and uh, the only reason I can think of that is because of all the, I mean, the very, very uh, crude engines, really. And it's the amount of swap and difference between uh, the, the timing chain, uh, the, the camshaft drive to the distributor, shaft of the distributor, the bearing of the distributor, plastic top of the, of the rotor arm, um, the spring of the, uh, of the points operating, all of it is just a simple mechanical system operating at an enormous number of times, more than the time per second. So there's no wonder that there's actually changes in the system that's ready. But to me, you need the correct dwell angle at the speed that the engine is normally running on the road, which I'm saying is about 3,000 to 3,000 degrees. So I'll now stop the engine. So the dwell is if it's at 14 thou, it means that the points are closed less, which means that the dwell angle, i.e. the amount of time that the, the, the points are closed, is greater. And for 16 thou, 16 thou, then the amount of time that the points are closed is smaller. So an optimum, I suppose, is about 15 thou, right in the middle of the range, um, which is, gives you about 60 degree, 60 degree. Notice that the, um, there is a difference uh, in the amount of dwell you need, depending on what kind of distributor you've got in your, uh, in, in your car. Um, there's two types of uh, distributor, there's um, a symmetric one and a high lift one. Uh, the Mighty has got a high lift one, so the points gap is 14 to 16 now. For, a, for, a, for a, a symmetric one, it's, the points is different, and I'll show a table which shows the points gap for symmetric cams and the amount of dwell you need for the different point setting. Well, I hope that's it. That's it now. And I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, encourage you all to go out and buy an analog uh, dwell meter um, to give you a much more accurate point reading. Because, uh, of course, it takes account of any kind of imperfections in the points, any bubbles you may have on the surface. Um, it, it takes away all those kind of like um, sliding the points and sliding out readings that you might, um, that you always spend time actually trying to get right.